Yo, everybody, Buddy, and welcome here. to the podcast, everyone. Welcome to podcast. Welcome home. We haven't we haven't been here for for a little bit. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah. We we recorded the first three, and then we were like, nah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now we're back. Yeah, school school's just getting super busy. We have a new addition to the podcast. All of this cool stuff. Burnout with editing on, uh, with Tony. Oh, yeah. It'll be fine, yeah. though. All, all of this stuff is just coming to a head. You're ahead. Dude. I wish. Oh, oh. You, you talk out of a head. You're a talking head. Yeah, but I'm also a body. Wait, what? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Most of your brain's in your body, dude. It's fucked. It's weird. You don't even want to know the shit that I know. What do you know? Couldn't you couldn't even handle what I know. I know what you know, man. I know what you know. Okay. Okay. Holy fuck. Okay. What? For some reason, my text box is uh, <laughs> at the top of the screen going over the characters' faces. But whatever. It tells me who All it right. is. It tells me who it is, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't need to see this. Works. I already know the answers. I can read it. It works. Alright, let's just get in. Let's just get, get in. Get right into it. Okay. So, gotta get back into, into Battler mindset right now. So... Oh, I'm fucking teenager, dude. Oh. <laughs> That's what Battler sounds like. That sounds like uh, that guy from one of the fish from SpongeBob, the beach fish. When they laugh, they're like, oh. they're like exactly like yeah, you dude. just laughed. I fucking, I fucking love that laugh. I love fucking. <laughs> fucking All right, but yeah. I see. So she's not a witch, but a mistress named Beatrice who lived on the island. It all makes sense now, so there can be more than 18 people, which means I can defeat the line of reasoning that says any crime impossible for all 18 people must involve magic. That's a big scoop of ice cream in my ass. Hey, what was this guy's voice again? Oh, it was French. Uh, he was like I was French fucking French. or Italian. Oh no, or Scottish. Sort of? I tried to be French, but it turned into a Scottish voice. Right. <laughs> I remember Best now. Best character. And Best I character. just watched Filth and Train Spotting two yesterday, so I've got a. Pr- uh, those are like all yeah. in Scottish, so fucking. You got a perfect. Oh yeah. Representation of what a Scottish accent is. <laughs> Pardon me. Battler, fuck. Okay, I already fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Battler Sama. Uh, would you like some black tea and cookies? Sure. Beato's butler, who called himself Ronave, appeared out of nowhere. A plate set on a silver tray that he held was filled with delicious-looking steaming black tea and cookies. Oh shit, this is you. Yeah. I really don't like this guy's smile. For some reason, it doesn't look like a smile used to warm a gritty guest. It feels like he's mocking me somehow. I don't know if he really takes me for an idiot. Or if it's just a joke or something, but it's really irritating me. I don't need any. I'm busy now. Leave me alone. Oh my. Such a shame, and the cookies were so delicious, too. Cooked so wonderfully that it would be wasted on a mere human. There we go. I'm getting back into it. I'll eat some when I feel like it. Just set it down somewhere. Get out of here. Will that be acceptable? Then I shall do so. You may eat them when they get cold and stale and then regret to the fullest that you did not eat them while they were fresh. You really are annoying. Well, you're a lot better than that Beato who keeps doing that creepy cackle right next to my ear. Oh yes, yes, that is quite true. There are times when my lady's laughter becomes quite undignified. Every time I hear it, I find it painful to comprehend. 
Why such a noble demon as myself must serve such a master? Boo coo coo coo. <laughs> That's a weird laugh. <laughs> Man, you're weird. You laugh weird. <laughs> you should feel bad about yourself. If you don't like it, then you couldn't... Then couldn't you just not work for her? And yet, to continue serving is furniture's joy. If we do not serve, we would hardly be furniture. Setting that aside, how has the game been proceeding? Just now, you seem to have found some useful information that quite pleased you. Well now, I wonder what your shallow wit has conjured up. As Ronovi mocked me and giggled, he followed my earlier coo -coo -coo -coo. literally coo -coo. placed the black tea and cookies in a random spot nearby. In any case, it appears you are now more confident in the existence of a 19th person, yes? Would you be gracious enough to allow me to hear your opinion? Dot dot dot. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna say it again in front of Beato anyway. No reason to hide it. Basically, it looks like there's a hidden mansion somewhere on this island, and that grandfather had his mistress living there. So the question that's been torturing me about whether there are 18 or 19 people can be easily resolved. You have driven yourself into a corner because of the dead end that you yourself have created. Even though you deny the witch, Battler, you hold a double standard and refuse to accept that the culprit is one of the eighteen. The easiest way to deny the wish would be to suspect one of the eighteen. It isn't easy to gather alibis for every one of them. You always find at least one person with a fragile alibi. I could probably continue to deny the wish forever if I just used that person as a scapegoat. However, I refuse to do that. Ah, it's useless. It's all useless. Every one of those 18 people is either a parent, a relative, or a cousin to me. And those reliable servants who are sometimes serious and sometimes fun to be with. I won't let myself use any one of them as a scapegoat. In the past, my resolve wavered. That's how Beto hit me where my heart was weak and got me to fucking become her slave. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked. That was fun. <laughs> uh, 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 accepting and understanding one's own weaknesses. It is not something that can often be accomplished. Battler, you use this theory about a 19th person as a spear. Or should I say, a shield? In any event, in contrast to how unprepared you were in the previous games, the fact that you now have a compass bearing on how to fight is a dramatic leap forward, let us say. With this, you can suspect a 19th person and pursue your theory that the culprit is a human without having to doubt any of the 18 you love and respect. That's it, exactly. Like in the first game when Cannon was killed in the boiler room. There are plenty of tricks I could have mentioned without hesitation. <coughs> as long as a 19th person existed. In the very first game, Cannon was killed in the border boiler room. I remember well, that. I think he was... Huh? I said, I remember that too. Yeah, I remember that too. One might, one might think he was attacked by Kumasawa who had gone down to the boiler room with him. Or maybe that someone who had appeared to be dead earlier was actually faking it and ambushed him. <gasps> Time of Kinzo. <laughs> Either way, it was a move that forced me to suspect one of the 18. However, by simply proposing the 19th person existed... There was no longer any need to suspect one of the 18 for that murder in the boiler room. Yeah, because Kinzo couldn't did it. In short, I can at least deny the line of reasoning saying that if something is impossible for every one of the 18, therefore the culprit is a witch. Using this argument, it's easy to explain, for example, the problematic case that has already occurred in this game. Who gave Marie the letter? Even if all 18 people have alibis, I could easily explain everything by saying that the 19th person must have visited her and given, him that, given her that letter. Hmm, hmm. I'd say that's quite a good move. Now, how would I strike back against it? You still have plenty of weak points, even if you are aware of them. Maybe the 18th person attack would be an effective move. To judge the strength of your defense, it may be amusing to contest that point again. Then how will you do it, Demon Butler? Well, let's see. He can't. He can't even do it. 
I believe it oh, would. I believe it would be appropriate to ambush the piece representing this nineteenth person that you mentioned. Battler, you have never met this nineteenth person, yes? Would you please show some proof that this nineteenth person exists? How naive! Of course, I knew you'd probably try that move. Hmm. My my. Please respond to it. Witches and demons and the like. There's no more fitting move for you guys to use. It's one of those. Devil's proofs. <laughs> so epic, dude. Fucking... When you try to make some claim to humans like us, we always counterattack by telling you to show some proof. Because that's a human move. But I'm fighting with a witch. I'm taking part in a battle with someone who isn't human. And some moves exist that only can that can only be used in the game against a witch. They're cheap moves. And that's what this devil's proof is. Because it's impossible to prove. Let's assume there's a hidden mansion on Rakajima, separate from the Ushirumiya family mansion. And that a woman named Beatrice lives there. In order to prove this, one must find this mansion and actually bring Beatrice out of it. This is called actual proof in the human world. However, if we follow the rules of the devil's proof, you can't deny that she exists, even if there's no proof that she does. Because it's impossible to prove that something doesn't exist. That's right, I'm finally able to turn the tables using this devil's proof, which tormented me so much before. Those guys were always trying to force me to accept the existence of the witch with it. After all, it was physically impossible for me to show any proof that witches don't exist and deny Beato's claims. That's why I kept getting hit with a reckless argument that witches do exist and was able, unable to counterattack. And that's why I'll spin the chessboard around right now. If I can't disprove the existence of witches, then that means if I suggest that 19th human exists, you can't deny that either. In other words, because of this, because this problematic and mysterious mistress is craftily hiding herself, it'd be perfectly natural if you never found her, no matter how hard you looked. So you can't say that your inability to find this 19th person proves that she doesn't exist. Therefore, it's impossible to deny the 19th person's existence. Beto used the devil's proof to make any, to make denying her own existence impossible. But this time, it's become my weapon. If we can get away with this argument, then forget just, nine, just a 19th person. This island could be full of people we don't know about. And even if there were 10 or 100 of them, she still couldn't deny that they existed. In the last game, and the one before that, among the murder scenes that showed up, there were several that were extremely intricate and must have taken a lot of effort to set up. It's really hard to imagine a single culprit setting all, up all of those. However, if, if not just the 19th person, but 10 or 100 people were hidden somewhere, that wouldn't be any problem at all. They'd all. If they all split up the work, they could handle any job in a short period of time. Of course, doubts will naturally arise as to whether a large group of people like that could sneak around the mansion without being noticed. But those are all settled by the devil's proof. You can't deny that even a hundred people were there just because they weren't seen or noticed. Even though I'm saying it myself, it's such a stupid argument that it makes me want to throw up. However, because it's such a dirty move, it's a perfect one to use against a witch. Well, this is just my imagination. But what if about a hundred suspicious men wearing go masks were hiding in the shadows? Something like that's worse than laughable. Almost like the cockroaches. If you see one, it means there's a hundred more hiding somewhere. Well, I do think it's a ridiculous argument that's horribly twisted. If my opponent were human, I'm sure they'd yell at me like this was out of my mind, like I was out of my mind. <coughs> but my opponent is a witch, and after all, that's the kind of competition we're having, isn't it? I'll use any kind of reckless argument to explain it using humans and deny the witch. Anyway, with this move, I won't have to doubt any of the 18 who are close to me again. I won't suffer a defeat like last time again. <clears throat> I see. You have learned from your previous defeat. That is good. 
It's no surprise that you've become so devious now that you're in your third game. You first strengthen your own defense. That is truly a solid first step. Quite a spectacular move, I would say. Well, even if we do assume that there's a 19th person, there are so few tricks left that I can't resolve, like the actual number of master keys, no matter how many humans I add. Still, it isn't bad as a first step for the time being. Batrar, your trump card is the important piece called the 19th person. You countered my move of asking where the proof was by using the devil's proof. A good skirmish. Although I must apologize for making a move by myself when my lady isn't here. I find that I too am growing slightly interested. I wonder if you will allow me to make yet another move on Milady's behalf. Let's have it. I've got no shortage of opponents, be they witches or demons. Bitch. This move you presented called the Devil's Proof. It's a specialty of us demons, but there are also various other moves available to us. Do you know of a move called Hempel's Raven? Hample's Raven? What are you talking about? No, not Beatrice. No. Do you know what a Hample's Raven is? No. Oh, well, they're going to they're gonna teach you. You're going to learn something. I'm going to be learning, dude. <laughs> Just then, ah, that enraging laugh I've heard so many times started echoing in my mind and in my body. The room is filled with dazzling golden butterflies, and in the center of that whirlwind, the golden witch appeared. If it isn't milady, good morning. I thought you might be doing something interesting while I was away. Hempel's Raven, was it? Such a familiar old move I could almost laugh. To think the day has come when I get to show it off to Battler. It's a classic move to use against a Devil's Proof. Ronave, I will make this move. Do not get in the way of my fun. So you finally show up, you guffaw, guffawing witch. I see you're laughing like a freak, just as <laughs> you fear. You f say it, I'm a freak. This guy was just talking behind your back just now. Telling me how you undignified you look when you do that. Right? How rude. Is that true? Nonsense. Why would I speak such gossip about my lady, whom I regard with such sincere respect? I can't believe you say something so shameless. Doesn't look like we will be getting. Doesn't look like we'll be getting along well together. Ha 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 Well, that is fine. Let us return to the point at hand. Hempel's Raven is used to show actual proof using the contrapositive. In other words, it is a move like this. What must you do to prove that ravens are black? Huh? What are you talking about? Prove that ravens are black. Wouldn't you just have to catch a raven and check to see if it's black? That's right. You must simply prove that a raven equals black. Do you see that if you instead prove that birds that aren't black equals not ravens, you would reach the same argument? If you go throughout the world and examine all birds that are not ravens and prove that none of them are black, then as a result you can claim that therefore blackbirds are ravens. This is called an argument by the contrapositive. Is that too difficult for you? Yeah, no kidding. I've got no idea what you're saying. Dude, it's a simple philosophical principle. It's actually super easy. <laughs> Bachelor, what about this example? Let us say that you have two boxes and one of them is a winner with a cookie inside. Of course, the other one is a loser and is empty. Uh, for, for example, here are two boxes, where one has a cookie inside and means you win, while the other is empty and means you lose. At this moment, it has a cookie inside equals you win, 
which implies that you do not win equals it had no cookies inside. When such a relationship exists, the latter is called the contrapositive. When if A then B is true, then if not A then not A is also true. Well, that's obvious. If the one you guessed was the loser, then you'd automatically know that the other one was the winner. In other words, you could choose the box at random whether it's the winner or the loser. You'll be able to figure out which box has the cookie in it after your first move. That is correct. If the cookie is in the box you open, then the devil's proof is satisfied. You can directly prove that this box is the winner equals this box has a cookie in it. However, if the box you open is empty, then the reverse, Hempel's Raven, is satisfied. In other words, this box does not have a cookie in it equals this box isn't the winner. And as long as we accept the premise that there are no more than two boxes, the contrapositive shows that the other box is automatically the winner. Well, I think I'm starting to see your reasoning. Only poison I can stop poison, and only twisted logic can stop twisted logic. Then what? How does that overturn my claim that because there's definitely a 19th human hidden on this island, even if all 18 people have alibis, I still won't have to accept witches? Very well. I will teach you about my move. First of all, you are stating that the culprit is not among the 18 equals the culprit is a 19th person. <laughs> so, if you use the contrapositive, it ends up like this. In short, the culprit is not a 19th person, equals the culprit is one of the 18. Huh? What the... what do you mean? <laughs> Fucking battler. Stupid. <laughs> only, yeah. only that I've countered your move. Let's try and keep things simple. Ronave, explain. It seems you've made things easy enough for battler to understand with your cookie in a box analogy. Then forgive my presumption. Allow me to explain my earlier example once more. Allow me to repeat my earlier story about two treasure boxes, one of which has a cookie in it. In this situation, you have an 18 person box and a 19th person box, so the cookie represents the culprit. Battler, let's say you open the 18 person box. Because the cookie is not there, you have paradoxically proven that therefore the cookie is in the 19th person box. That lets us make an even more paradoxical claim. In other words, if it was first shown that the 19th person box was empty, it would prove at the same time that the cookie is in the 18 person box. Battler played this move in order to avoid having to doubt any of the 18, but it's now been used to prepare an 18 person attack. <laughs> what the hell? Poor Battler. Poor Battler. He's learning. <laughs> Wait, but that doesn't because they don't have any proof, so it doesn't. So it's you, you haven't opened any of the boxes yet. Well, <laughs> if I go first and prove that the inside of the nineteenth person box is empty, you will automatically have to accept that the cookie is in the eighteen person box. All I've done is say it the other way around. Yes. So, that move I was so confident in was actually a double-edged sword? That's right. As soon as you played that move and attempted to explain everything with the 19th person, you'd already taken on a risk that you might be forced to accept that the culprit was one of the 18. I see. Hempel's Raven. So this is a countering a technique? Wait, if I really think about it, the counter is really disadvantageous for me. This isn't a cookie we're talking about. If I imagine that the loser treasure chest actually has a bomb in it, it gets even clearer. And there aren't just two treasure chests, but 18 plus one more for the 19th person. If you think of it as a total of 19 boxes, it gets even easier to picture. First off, one of the premises of the human culprit theory is that the bomb will definitely be in one of the, these boxes. I didn't want to place the bomb in the boxes for any of the 18, so I used the devil's proof and created the 19 person box so I could throw the bomb in there. That much was fine, but then Beto struck back. 
Now if the contents of the 19th person box are empty, that'll automatically mean that the bomb's in one of the other 18 boxes. If I could examine what's inside all 18 of those boxes, then as long as I can show that the bomb isn't in any of them, I'll be able to safely show that the 18 are innocent. If that were possible, I'd have nothing to fear. However, in reality, that'll be almost absolutely impossible. Uh-oh. The police wouldn't come here in this typhoon. We don't have access to scientific investigations or experts or anything. In short, we can't prove anything decisively. It'll be impossible for me to find any proof other than simply gulping down whatever alibis each of the 18 give. That means I personally have to prove their innocence, and I have to do it perfectly. Like by staying with them the whole time, never letting them out of my sight for a second. By doing that, I could probably be sure of that person's innocence. Sure that, sure that the bomb is in, in the, what? I could probably be sure of the person's innocence. Oh, sure that the bomb isn't, isn't in their box. However, in practical terms, that'll be impossible. In other words, I'll have to expend an incredible effort just to check the contents of one box. And there are 18 of them. In other words, unless I bound up, unless I bound all 18 of them in chains and watch over them, it'll be impossible to prove that all of them have empty boxes. However, Beato only has to open one box, the 19th person box, and show that it's empty to prove that the bomb's in one of the other 18 boxes. Furthermore, there's no need for her to show which of the 18 boxes has the bomb. I've got 18 times more work to explain my pet theory that Beatrice does for hers. Poor Madeline. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's pretty... Well, poor me, dude. I gotta figure this shit out. When a devil's proof exists in the world, it takes a vast amount of effort to argue against it, and there are many cases in which it is impossible to do because of the situation. However, Hempel's Raven turns that problem around and makes it possible to prove things easily. By using Hempel's Raven, various re reckless arguments become possible to prove true or false. For example, let's just say I make the proposition, all humans except me equals foolish. Normally, I would have to examine all of humanity except myself and show that they were all foolish. However, in reality, it would be impossible to investigate billions of people. It's just the same sort of effort you'd need to open all 18 boxes. Ha 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 ha! However, by using Hempel's Raven, the contrapositive of that proposition would change it into this. If you, to use your phrase, spin the chessboard around on the claim that all humans except me equals foolish, you would have to do nothing more than prove that not foolish equals me. And what do you think that means? <laughs> as soon as I know the fact that I am wise, I will be able to show in an instant that every one of the billions of people in the human race is foolish. In less than a that's no. <laughs> that's, that's not actual argumentation. <laughs> In less than a second, I could finish proving that the entire human race is more foolish than me. It truly is the strongest and fastest QED in the world. This Hempel's Raven. What does QED mean? <laughs> what what a ridiculous argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is a very, very convenient move. Not only demons, but gods also use it. When they propose that the blessed equals the servants of a god, the contrapositive is a human is not a servant of a god equals he must not be blessed. So, in order to prove that servants of gods are blessed with divine protection, they only have to bring ill fortune down upon those people who don't receive such protection. So, by bringing misfortune down upon those who don't believe in them, they prove their blessedness. Hmm. An enormous cost is required to give humans happiness. However, it takes a lot less to bring humans misfortune. <laughs> so, by using Hempel's Raven, gods are actually giving believers the joy of divine protection for cheap. Y you demon. It's a demon's argument. That's crazy. Fucking demons. Getting you to try to believe yeah, crazy stuff. That's not stuff. even a good argument. It seems we've gone off topic. 
Let us get back to the point. You're gay. The move from my counterattack is complete. And now, in response to your claim of the 19th person is the culprit, therefore the 18 are isn't innocent and the witch doesn't exist, I say, therefore, if I can prove that the culprit is not some 19th person, we can be sure that the culprit is either one of the 18 or a witch, right? Yes. That is true. And I am the wisest person in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can use that I... argument as well. <laughs> yeah. For a while, I just stood there, shocked, completely forgetting to close my mouth. Just when I thought I'd countered one of the strongest points, their counterattack had been this reckless argument that I couldn't possibly have anticipated. Is this going to be impossible after all? To continue denying the witch on the island with no more than 18 people? And still believe in the innocence of those innocence of those eighteen people. Is that just a delusion? Am I just trying to escape reality? Yeah. It's it's more common than you think. Don't worry, Battler. Not yet. Don't give up this desperate struggle yet. Who cares about whoever's raven? They're just trying to confuse me with like <laughs> bringing up weird bits of trivia. I use I use the devil's proof. Don't feel uncertain about something you've used once. Believe in the spirit you've drawn. Believe in the heart of the card. No. <laughs> I believe in my own strength. I believe in the strength of the cards, man. Always the cards. <laughs> Always. Man. We're still in the opening part of the game. Do you plan to keep thinking on this level? Yes. Ah. Wait a sec, I want to be sure. I'll admit I talked about the 19th person to keep it simple, but if we're going to use the devil's proof to raise the number of people above 18, then we have no way of knowing there were 10 people, 100 people, or an indeterminate number of people. There's always one more than you assume. Get it? The counter by twist of logic was something even more twisted, so the only thing that I could that could counter that would be even crazy <laughs> twisted logic. How far down does this rabbit hole go? <laughs> <laughs> there's a fucking million people, there's gods on the island, what the fuck? Hmm, I see. Even if I somehow prove an alibi for the 19th person, as soon as I do, you will think up a 20th person and claim that they are the culprit. By repeating this endlessly, you would make it so I kept searching for their alibis for all eternity. I see, I see. <laughs> Just like a demon king summoning a plague of locusts. I wouldn't expect anything less from Kinzo's grandchild. It looks like you have been gifted with a talent in summoning. In short, you're dumb. Ha, correct. <laughs> it's impossible to always prove an alibi for each person X outside the first 18. How do you like that, Bieto? Now that I know that we're having a battle with twisted logic, I won't lose. Because I've got the most twisted brain around. It's all twisted. <laughs> How foolish. Who do you think I am? I am the Endless Witch. The thought that you could challenge me endlessly is just absurd. Endless control means that I am able to kill endlessly. When your 19th person folds, you will summon a 20th. And when your 20th person folds, you will summon a 21st. And when your 21 person folds and your 22nd person folds, you will summon a 23rd person, a 34th person, a 64358223579673204th person. Did you think you'd have me at your mercy for all eternity? I laugh at infinite regress. The infinite doesn't work against me. Well then, how will you kill my endless? Just try and show me. <gasps> Ow! You fucking cut me, you bitch. Oh shit. I have the power to speak the truth in red. <clears throat> Here it comes. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh! When I speak in red, it will contain absolutely no illusions. If I say once in red that there are no more than 100 people on this island, you will no longer be permitted to create a 101st person. <laughs> See, Badler? 
What truth shall I tell in red this time? Where shall I strike for the kill and force you into hopelessness? <laughs> Come, show me your usual frightened face. Hmm? Hmm? What? Nothing, I just got a text message. Oh. Do, 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 do. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, and then I said what? Oh. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I wonder what kind of creepy look I had on my face as I laughed right then. That red sure is scary. Every time it jumps out, I'm driven into the depths of hopelessness. But I've already realized something. There's no need to be overly afraid of the red. Because, because her red... Her saying that her speaking in red was not in red. So that means that her ability to speak the truth in red isn't actually real. No, the very first thing that she said in red uh, was, I have the ability to speak the truth in red. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You've brought out your trump card again. So, how and for what will Beatrice use, this, use the red this time? What? Ho. Oh. What do you mean by that? Suddenly looking so relaxed. Sorry, but I was waiting for you to take out that blood red treasured sword of yours. Let's see what you'll proclaim in red this time. You aren't going to say the culprit was one of those 18 people, are you? Be careful, since that'd be self destruction for you, right? That'd be the same as throwing away your own witch theory yourself. A complete resignation. That's right. The red wasn't always a weapon that worked in Beto's favor alone. It was the other way around. If she used the wrong way, it was dangerous enough that she could bring about her own death. If she used it carelessly and said something that ended up denying herself, that'd be exactly the same as self-destructing. Of course, it'd be sad and difficult for me to, for me to accept if you told me in red, that one of the 18 was the culprit. No matter who the culprit actually was, I'd definitely have to deal with some tough emotions. But before that, it would mean your defeat. Saying you read that the culprit is a human is equivalent to your proclamation of resignation. If you wanted us to finish each other off in a simultaneous clash, I'd say that's a pretty interesting move. However, this particular battle will end my victory. Beatrice's red was your true trump card. When that person speaks in red, it's definitely the truth, and no amount of proof or counter-arguments can change that. Until now, she's used that to sever it, severely wound me, and each time, the tiny foundation supporting my heart gets split in half. However, if she uses it carelessly, then I can also glean a little information about the truth. In the last game, I used that to my advantage, especially during the chapel's closed room trick and almost completely got her boxed in at one point. But she was pretty sly herself. She learned from experience, and since then she started using dis discretion in the timing of her red. This feeling of tension was almost literally like a battle with real swords. This is a high-level intellectual battle. No, not an intellectual battle. This really is twisted logic. It was the world's craziest and worst battle of twisted logic. <gasps> We're fucking stupid. <laughs> That's all it is. Okay, now it's time to hear your plan. That's right, to use your Hempel's Raven. First, you'll have to confirm in red how many humans there are other than the 18. After all, if you proclaim in red that none of the people in this group are the culprit, that's right, that might be a fatal wound to me. I'm surprised that you no longer have even an atom of fear for the red, which once terrified you so much. You're quite resilient. Try taking it out. That treasured sword, that trump card of yours. This time, you might be able to make me surrender with a single stroke, right? <laughs> oh shit. Interesting. I wouldn't have it any other way. Agitate her. Challenge her. 
drive her into a corner to make her speak in red. Of course, her red's always wiping out my only rays of hope. But don't be afraid of that. On this island, overcome with falsehoods and illusions, the only thing I can trust is the information she speaks in red. It's my only way across the chasm of hell. Just a single tightrope. Her merciless blood red blade is the only way I can survive. This isn't just walking on a tightrope. It's literally walking on the edge of a blade. Of course, I'm not afraid, because I'm just fucking awesome, dude. Well, that says, of because course, my... I'm afraid. Oh. Well, but I'm not afraid, so whatever. <laughs> because my victory condition is the denial of witches, then, to use her con contrapositive logic, the culprit must be human. But I didn't want to search for a culprit at mid-18. That's what made me stick to a weak position, since I had to claim both that it couldn't be a witch, and that couldn't be one of the 18. Last time, I was unable to understand that. Slats where she hit me, leaving me tattered and defeated. Like a bitch. But that's okay. Let her hit me. Let her attack. No problem. Someone said it once in an old sword fighting movie. That a good fortress has one, and only one, intentionally weak point. The enemy would gather there. They would be lured there. And that would be where the actual battle took place. As long as I understood my weak points, and as long as she wanted to attack those weak points, it was as if I, it was as if I was I were luring her into launching an attack there. Gauge the distance between us with care, retreating step by step, making them move forward. The more she recklessly flourished that red, the more chances I would get to strike back. Don't be afraid of the red. Keep a corner so that she'll have no choice but to refute me with red. No matter how oppressively she speaks in red. That's right. That red itself is the same as fresh blood leaking from her wounds. Yeah. So, what's wrong? First of all, why don't you tell me how many people are on this island in total? If you don't, your raven can't cut me up. Humph. <laughs> How surprising that you can be this desperate and yet this difficult. One cannot make light of someone putting their life on the line, no matter what the era. It's no surprise you're Kinzo's grandchild. The more cornered you are, the bolder you become. <laughs> That's how dumb people laugh. <laughs> Ronovic cleared his throat. <laughs> it appears to be a stalemate. That black tea I worked so hard to make is getting cold, my lady. Mm. Ronave, who was supposed to be her ally, roguishly rushed her into making her next move. Beetle probably shot thought she'd managed to smile back and appear confident, but she couldn't hide the sweat building up on her forehead. Or between her cleavage, dude. Uh. <laughs> By now, she had completely lost the confident feeling that she had allowed her to turn her nose up at the, her worthless opponent. Of course, she probably wouldn't be cornered by something like this. She's just being cautious. Until now, I've been inexperienced. I didn't know how to fight, and I wasn't strong enough to be her opponent. However, now that we've reached the third game, she's realized that I'm starting to become more skilled. And she's grown more cautious, thinking every move over carefully. Sure, that's just fine, Beatrice. Sorry to keep you waiting. Are you happy now? Now it's just... Now it's starting to get interesting, huh? Ha 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 yeah. <laughs> then should we get to the heart of the matter and go with the usual? Oh, the usual, you say? Then, by all means, if I don't hear you say that, I guess I just won't feel like starting. The first move is mine. Here I go, Beato. You're dumb. <laughs> Repeat it. On this island, there are only 18 people. <gasps> 
She can't do it. If I hear you say this in red, I'll have no choice but to suspect one of the 18. I won't be able to say 19th person did it, so all doors will be closed to me. However, I believe the culprit definitely isn't one of the 18. There's no way any of those 18 could commit such brutal murders. I'll say it again. Repeat it. On this island, there are only 18 people. <gasps> Whoa. I refuse. I won't say why. Hmm. Phew. I had avoided what would have been the worst red for me. If she'd repeated that, I'd be faced with those two worst choices of accepting the witch or suspecting one of the 18. Like last time, all over again. But be it to hide and proclaim my ultimate and greatest weakness in red. She refused to repeat it, even though there was no reason for her to not to strike. Even though it was a weakness she should have been drooling at. She hadn't sliced me up with red by using that move which should have been as good as forking a rook in the king. This was a big sign of my advantage. That's right, the culprit isn't one of the 18. I don't suspect anyone, and since the culprit isn't a witch either, it means 19th person exists on this island. <gasps> Whoa, and that's you, a person who, as grandfather's mistress of 30 years, has been secretly living in a hidden mansion in the forest for a long, long time. The human Beatrice. What the frick? That's right. You aren't a witch or anything like that. You're just a human who's been living on this island in hiding for several decades. You're probably old and really look gross and stuff. <laughs> Did you just call me the endless witch who has lived for over 1,000 years a human? <laughs> For a while, Beatrice continued to laugh unpleasantly and gloatingly. Or maybe spitefully? Hmm. Are you ready? I'll keep going. Again, repeat it. There are 19 people or more on this island. <gasps> Epic. Beatrice fell silent once again. She'd probably remain extremely cautious as long as confirming the number of humans on this island might give her some large disadvantage. Depending on the situation. The red has already become a foothold for my counterattacks. Now that we know this, it makes red very risky for the witch. But if she couldn't repeat this, her Hempel's raven wouldn't be effective. To break my devil's proof, she would need to sell the existence and number of people outside the 18 red. That's right. She couldn't break the existence of a 19th person unless she used red. I've closed Beto in giving her no choice but to speak in red. There really is a way to fight in this witch's game. <gasps> Whoa. It's okay to refuse. If you can't see it in red, that means there's a total of 18 plus X people on this island. That X is a pretty massive piece of losing your first move, right? After all, from now on, all the tricks that were impossible for the 18 can be explained with a human X who isn't in the group. This huge piece can break open all the rooms you've said were closed because everyone had an alibi. It was just like how a chess bishop can cut a thin line through enemy forces as long as there's a slight gap. Hey, that's actually a technique that was described to me in how to do. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> just yesterday. It could only be effective used on squares of the same color, but it was very good at controlling territory on the board. Mm. It looked like Beto also noticed her current plight. She couldn't just sl she couldn't just let such an important piece go, especially this close to the beginning of the game. If she pulled out her red treasured sword, it wouldn't be that difficult to save her from this. But Beto was completely aware that I wasn't expecting it. She was afraid that a careless red truth might end up strangling her own neck. Because in the first place, a witch is something that ought to be denied and read. Believe. Don't doubt. Witches don't exist. Something like that couldn't exist in this world. They can only exist in the values between truths. They have a fragile existence, curled up in these cracks, 
frantically trying to protect themselves from the brutal winds of the truth. And they can only break and they can what? And they can only barely exist like a mirage by surviving on falsehoods and illusions. Just like the Principium Individuationis. In other words, the red, which only witches can use, is the reality that might make that might easily deny their very being. The more they brandish the red words, the more they begin to lose bit by bit that crack in truth inside which they can endure. That's why they don't want to use red words and carelessly use that crack in truth, which is based on fuzzy information. Or illusions, in other words. That's because they understand that they're gradually being cornered. Of course, that bastard will never admit it. Because if she did, it'd be the same as admitting that she's something that can't exist in this world. Like an imaginary number. Like the number two. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Stay strong. I know that she is the one who's really been pierced to the bone. After all, her red treasured sword can't be used without a lot of preparation. And then immediately just read all this stuff that he said is wrong. <laughs> What's wrong? I'll say it again. Repeat it. There are 19 people or more on this island. She just, just proves everything. I imagine that's what that's what would happen. That makes sense. Oh no, she refuses. Damn. Hmm. I refuse. At the end of Beto's wording, she took a single deep breath and quietly announced her refusal. I thought she'd use it, but Beto refused to speak in red, even though it would cost her victory in the opening part of the game. You refused? Which means that from now on, I can create as many fictional character axes outside of the 18 as I want. <laughs> Do as you wish. I have refused to repeat what you have told me. Isn't that enough for now? The reason for my refusal is... No, I won't tell you yet. Anyway, oh, you. you'll know soon enough. Now! <laughs> Still acting tough, I see. Well, you're actually a total bitch for not saying anything in red. Choosing not to use the red is another way of using it. You called it my red treasured sword. A pleasant metaphor. I will use it too. A treasured okay. sword is at its best when it is sheathed. In fact, there are times it can instill even more fear because it is sheathed. That's right. As I fight, I always have to keep in mind whether you might spin everything around with those red words. It's some pretty serious pressure. And there are also times when you make things pretty tough by refusing to repeat after me. Those times, I can't tell if you can't repeat because my guess was right, or if you're just misleading me and telling me to flounder and letting me flounder about. If you think of it that way, yeah, it's a sheathed treasured sword. So what? If I'm going to push you off a cliff anyway, best to let you climb a bit higher first. We have still barely begun. Much is left to come. I'll resign from this challenge. Go and get drunk on your faint victory for now. But only for now. Fuck you, I'm gonna be drunk all the time. Like last, uh, like the ending of last. <laughs> it's not good when Battler gets drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Why isn't Battler just drunk all the time? <sighs> Practically speaking, the early part of the game ended with it being a sore loser. Even so, I couldn't relax my guard at all. That tension didn't fade one bit until I was greeted by the sound of Ronovi's applause. Spectacular, Battler. Perhaps you have started this game with an advantageous development. Who knows? I still don't know whether I've taken a piece of... whether I've taken a piece by my move, or whether she's guided me into taking it. After all, knowing you, you probably know I'm being led into a trap and that clapping is just you mocking me openly, right? How could you think that? I am innocently celebrating your ability, which has enabled you to take one shot at my lady, even though it is only the first round. In any event, my lady is a person who is quick to become arrogant. I believe that a little encouragement such as this can be good medicine every once in a while. 
This bump of yours sure has a vicious tongue. He does, so doesn't vicious. he? Sometimes he ticks me off as well. Sometimes he licks me off as well. My, my, how incredibly rude of me. <laughs> <laughs> well then, my lady, Petler, how would you like some more black tea? The game has still barely begun. Please allow me to prepare all the tea and snacks needed to adorn this game. I ask that you continue your game without any reservations. I will. Let's move forward. Now is when it really starts. Humph. <laughs> Very well. Let us advance the clock. Ronave, black tea, please. Certainly. How about a cookie? I don't need one. Give it to Beelzebub to keep her happy. Remain silent for now. Well, listen to the sound of the demon butler pouring tea. The witch closed her eyes slightly and fell silent. For some time she was deeply lost in thought, but eventually a roguish glint came into her eyes. Even though they were closed so I couldn't see them. What the fuck? Very well. Why don't I inform you now as to why I refused to speak in red during that first move? Oh, okay. that, that was pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, that was very quick. What? Bring it on. Show me what you've got. Why didn't you speak in red? Show me what S you got. Say, she should say this in red for why. <laughs> yes, that piece really was big enough that I'd hate to lose it. It may be hasty, but allow me to make my move. I won't use the red, but from here on, Rosa will explain on my behalf. Get out of here, dude. Listen. No. Yeah, because Rosa was, like, there in the beginning and shit. <sighs> okay. Ah, oh, shit. Of course, I think the same way. Rosa does too, right? Mm hmm? Rosa? Huh? Uh, sorry. M me too. I think that too. Sorry, I'm way behind. I'm still... Oh, I just got to Rosa. Oh, oh that's fine. And... I just got a super fast big brain. You know, <laughs> it's just so fast. What's wrong, Rosa? You've been really quiet for a while now. Are you feeling sick? From the beginning, Rosa had never been one to cut in on the siblings' fights. <laughs> but even so, she seemed unmotivated and had said almost nothing during this night's confluence. The whole time she had hung her head and appeared to be thinking of something else. You've been a days for a while now. Do you think you can protect the inheritance like that? You're also the mother of your child, so get a stronger hold on yourself, you... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh yeah! Did you wake up really early in the morning? If you feel sick, you, should, you shouldn't you should overdo it. The beds in our guest rooms have been prepared. How about taking a rest? I will guide you. No, I'm fine. Thank you. What is it? Is there something you're worried about? No, not really. Oh, Kyrie. Is that so? It feels like your mind has been elsewhere this whole time. I wonder if that has anything to do with what we've been talking about. At those words, everyone stared at Woza together. As if in response, Woza's shoulders quivered. Apparently, Kyrie's guess hadn't been wrong. Woza couldn't deny it either. No, um... The... She swallowed whatever it was she had been trying to say and went silent again. Of course, the other siblings also began to realize that something about her appearance was different from usual. What is it? You've been weird for a while. Did you think of something? 
We all just swore to remain united, didn't we? Don't hold back worrying by yourself. We oh, said we'd shit. talk. Fucking Rosa is a fucking demon, dude! <laughs> Rosa, kill us. What is wrong with you? Why do you have horns? The men pressed her one after the other, and Woza confessed resignedly and nervously. The atmosphere made it seem as though she was confessing to some modest plank, which had inadvertently brought about a serious situation. No, um, this... this mistress of grandfather's, this Beatrice, I... I was wondering if she's still... alive. Huh? Isn't it obvious that she's alive? After all, she was able to send that letter to us? Hmm... Whether she's in good health or not is a different story, though. The woman in that porch must be getting up there in age by now. I'd say she's healthy. People who are crafty when it comes to money stay healthy no matter how old they get. Her evil plan might even be the best rejuvenating agent. Wahahaha. <laughs> she shouldn't be alive. Huh? What did you just say? <gasps> Kapow. Beatrice is dead. I... I killed her. What Rosa the is the culprit. Rosa! <laughs> what did you say? What do you mean, Rosa? Mm, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> but it wasn't me who... It wasn't really me who killed her. Though I, though I did bring her to a place like that. No, I didn't kill her after all. I tried to make myself believe it was a dream. But it wasn't really a dream, was it? Which makes this a letter from Beatrice's ghost. <coughs> it was so sudden that everyone was lost for words. Rosa kept on talking, unable to stop, holding her head as her hair flew all about. Calm yourself, Rosa. I, I have absolutely no clue what's going on. Already dead? What do you, what do you mean? I think it means two things. First, it's literal meaning. And second, it backs up our earlier guest. Which means, Rosa has met with Beatrice, right? I've never heard Rosa mentioning anything like this, Rosa. When was it? When could you possibly have met Beatrice? Hmm. Long ago, long, long, long ago, we just moved over to the island and I was still young. It wasn't my fault. It's not like I killed her. Oh. <laughs> Calm down. No one's blaming you for anything, right? Every family member alive. First, drink some water. Okay. Matsuri the pitcher, please. Yes. Uh, here you go, Rosa. Please, calm yourself. Da, da, da. I was a little girl of eight years old. And I looked exactly like Maria. <laughs> Until Rosa was able to calm her wagged weaving, no one was able to speak a word. And there we go. Wait, what? Oh, that's that's the end of that one. What? Yep. Fuck you. And we can't read the next one because it's like two hours. It, but the yeah. next one is all about Rosa and Beatrice... Uh, hanging out to their best buds. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Wait a second. I don't see anything. Oh, I want to see what the first scene is, though. So this looks like the castle that we, we were showing at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, oh. 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 So now we're getting into, into more lore. Shit, dude. Okay, that's pretty cool. Well, uh, yeah, Kinzo's there too, I guess. 
Kinzo's there too, I guess. <laughs> Kinzo's pretty important, I think. Well, I think I think the first half is like the adventures of Kinzo and Beatrice, and then the second half is the adventures of Rose and Beatrice. Oh my Beatrice. god, Kinzo and Beatrice. Oh my god. <laughs> I is, thought he would be a lot younger looking. This is the first time we've seen Kinzo outside of his room, other than when he's dead. <laughs> other than when he's dead and when he takes a walk. Well, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there were a few times, uh, like, yeah, I guess, uh, before the family conference, there was one time when Cannon, uh, sees him, uh, crying about Beatrice in the garden or some shit. I forgot about that. yeah. Yeah. So, what, what do you (sighs) think? We got a lot of, uh, talk about, uh, Hempel's Raven. We got a lot of talk about that. This is the first, this is the first, uh, new, uh, like, thinking uh, technique or arguing technique that's been introduced since episode one and there's more there's more of those that get introduced so okay yeah well i i know a lot i know a lot of these like philosophical shits because i actually like memorize i've actually like memorized them and form arguments with them so i know them pretty good it's mm-hmm. so, like if a then b if not b then not a uh Things like that. All those, like, you know, reversible and all that shit. Yeah. That. And also, obviously, not every argument works in every situation. Like, uh, <laughs> the, no. I'm, uh, <laughs> everybody else in the world is foolish except for me because I'm not foolish. Yeah, like, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> but you could say something like this. All dogs are dogs. All, God exists if God exists. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah, but um, I think I think that um, uh, when Beatrice was saying Most that, it was just uh, kind of pointing out. Uh, sorry. I was just saying it's like modus ponens and modus tones. I think is like the devil's proof and not devil's proof, and uh, the raven, Hempel's raven. Yeah, and I think Beatrice was just uh, saying that. Um, well, it was Ronave and Beatrice were saying that. Oh, I'm the smartest person in the world because I'm smart. <laughs> yeah. is uh was uh i think uh they were that's just like the author like kind of pointing out that uh the the witch's side yeah, uses crazy logic. uses crazy fucking logic <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. but yeah i do think that if he can like okay i'm thinking i'm gonna look look more in depth at those red truths because those seem to be pretty important there hasn't really Pretty been important. any except for one in this episode, and that was not from Beatrice. That was from, uh, like, Beatrice said, I can speak the truth in red. But other yeah. than that, there was only one, and we already knew that one. So all of the red has pretty much still been from uh, episode two. But yeah. there, there is going but to be think... more red in this episode, though. Don't worry. Um, the finale yeah, this, that I was telling... Makes... The finale that I was telling you about that's super long is, uh, it's usually, um, uh, on all the other channels I've seen, it's, like, the one that has the, it's, it's, even though it's really long, it always has, like, the most views, uh, of all of their Umineko mm-hmm. videos, just because I think they, they want to see people's reactions to all the stuff that happens, because there's a lot of crazy stuff happens in it, and there's a lot of red okay. truths in that one. All right. <laughs> Cool. But yeah, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win this game. It's gonna happen. Yeah, you lost the last two. No. Yeah, you did. Nah. Yeah, Not you if did. I don't believe that I did. Well, Battler lost the last two. Yeah, Battler did, but Battler's stupid. No, no, you didn't figure out who the culprit was. Yeah, but. That's. That's because Battler's stupid. Oh, well, that's the... Well, you lost... Yeah. You can't figure it out because someone else is stupid. You can't just blame yep. other people. Exactly. That's my entire reasoning. <laughs> I can't figure it out because they don't want me to figure it out. <gasps> no. But yeah, I am going to try and solve it at the very least. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now with this possible nineteenth person. This possible hundredth person, you mean? 
this possible. All these fucking men in goat masks are act. All these goats, goat people are actually men in goat masks. So. <gasps> what the frick? Could be. Alright, well, I think that's I think that's the end of this episode. Next episode we're gonna look at Kinzo uh doing some cool stuff with Beatrice. And Rosa. We're gonna look at Rosa. And Rosa. Kinzo's gonna do some cool stuff with Beatrice and then Rosa's gonna kill Beatrice, I guess. I wonder if we'll see any other sibling that is a child. Cause I think that'd be cool. Uh Rudolph as a kid would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> or Krause. Rudolph. Krause and Rudolph. Yeah. His Krause. fucking voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Krause. Oh, man. I can't wait. I can't wait, dude. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, but yeah, thanks for watching this ep- em- episode. Yeah, and come back on the Wednesday. Um, yeah. Bye.